Hello everyone, Darek Vos here from Kali Athletics and today I'm going to explain you how to start calisthenics and everything that beginner and not only should know. When thinking about calisthenics you probably see all of these impressive skills and body control but then when you try it you hit a wall. But no worries, it was the same for me at the beginning. Today I'm going to tell you how to start and get progress with calisthenics. Before I tell you how exactly should you train, present your routines and basics of programming, let's start with introduction. Warm up. Always make sure to spend at least 10-15 minutes for the full body warm up and I'm not going to go into details because I already made a video about it. Your warm up should be focused mostly on shoulders, wrists and elbows since these are going to be under a huge load during calisthenics workouts. Hollow body position Hollow body is a position that is going to be used in most of the basic exercises such as pull ups, dips, push ups, leg rises and so on. This is why it is a crucial thing to learn. Why? Hollow body is going to ensure you with a stability and most importantly it is going to keep your spine safe as it is a main function of your core, otherwise you're probably going to put a lot of stress on your lower back and over time end up with some issues. How to do it? Maintain posterior pelvic tilt, then squeeze your glutes, contract your abs and legs. Technique hints. As a beginner and not only, you're going to do a lot of mistakes. That's a normal thing, just keep in mind to always aim for improving it. Right now I'm going to share with you three basic hints that will be applied in most of the exercises. Posterior pelvic tilt is a must be of hollow body position, so whenever you're performing basic exercises keep in mind to maintain it in order to avoid additional stress on your lower back. Elbows in. Whenever performing pushing exercises you should aim for having your elbows in, otherwise you're going to put a lot of stress on your rotator cuffs since you internally rotate your shoulders. Elbows close to your body and rotated outwards will ensure you with the right movement pattern and provide you with more muscle activation. Active hang. Another factor we should focus on when doing calisthenics are your scapulas. Our scapulas can be retracted, protracted, elevated, depressed or upward, downward, rotated. When hanging on the bar you should include active hang that stands for scapulas retraction and depression. This position will engage your back muscles more during the basic movements such as pull-ups, chin-ups, Australian pull-ups and more as well as during leg rises it's going to ensure you with a better stability and decreased swinging. If you feel some stress on your wrists during workouts, make sure to find out the reason for this and if needed strengthen your wrists. However, there is an easy trick to get them into more comfortable position and it might suddenly happen that you won't feel discomfort anymore. Simply rotate your wrists up to 45 degrees and this placement is mostly used in more advanced exercises that requires more lean such as frog stand, planche but also can be used in handstand or even push-ups. Start with basics. Once we know the basic positions and some technique, we can move to exercises. Now the thing you hear everywhere start with basics. And yes, that's true. In order to later on move to more advanced exercises and skills practice, you have to prepare your muscles and tendons to more load as well as get these strength adaptations. Simply start up with pull-ups, Australian pull-ups, dips, push-ups, squats, leg rises and so on. I'm not going to focus much on this since you probably saw already a bunch of videos presenting all of the basic exercises, but at the end of this video I will show you an example beginner routine to follow. Progressions explained. But what if you're not able to do pull up yet or plank gets too easy? You have to adjust it to your level by choosing easier or more difficult exercises and we call it regressions or progressions. In case you cannot do LCD yet, 
work on tag elicit then after a few weeks try one leg elicit switches to finally work on full move. However, when the exercises get too easy, make it more difficult. Just take a look. When you're working out in a gym, you simply add weight and you're ready to go. Here, in calisthenics, we increase intensity of workouts by progressions or decrease by regressions. So, if you're not able to do push-ups, do them on knees. If you cannot do straight leg rises to the bar, do them with bent knees. It's all about you and your effort to find a solution. Progressive overload, the most important factor for beginners, intermediates and advanced athletes. If you want to progress in optimal way, you should have the progressive overload. What does it mean? Simply, do more and more each workout. How can you do it? A few methods can be applied, but we usually limit to those four. Increasing repetitions, increasing sets, increasing intensity of exercises and playing with tempo. Keep in mind that your muscles adapt to the load they get and because of that you want to make sure to challenge them more and more. What's the best way to do it? Simply write down everything you do and then during next workout set yourself a goal of doing a bit more. Repeat week by week. How many sets and reps? Most frequently asked question and there is no clear answer on that. We usually say that working on 3 up to 5 repetitions will let you work on strength, 6 to 14 will be focused more on muscle hypertrophy and above 14 muscle endurance. Overall that's true, however it doesn't mean that you won't get a hypertrophy when doing 5 repetitions or that your endurance will not get improved when doing 12 repetitions. Because of that, the tip I could give you as a beginner is to simply mix it. If you struggle with pull-ups but you can do one or two reps, then do it. Then when you get out of strength, you can finish it with regression by doing for example 10 assisted pull-ups. When it comes to sets, I would recommend 3 up to 5 sets depending on the exercise and one's goal. If you work in low range of reps and rather focus on strength than the high volume, then you can do even 5 or more sets. If you work in 8 to 12 reps range, I would recommend 3 to 4. What counts at the end is weekly sets amount per each muscle group, but since in calisthenics we usually do not isolate each muscle group, I would use a push-pull legs counting and start with around 20 sets per week for each to then increase. If you need a clear workout program with sets and reps provided, consider getting my full body transformation program and the link you will find in the description. Tempo is another crucial factor that every beginner should know. It simply indicates the speed at which you rise and lower your body. I made a video explaining it in details, so make sure to check it out. If you're a beginner, I would recommend working in tempo 2010 that stands for 2 seconds of eccentrics and 1 second of concentric part of movement. That will be suitable for improving form and stability. It is a great method to make workouts more challenging and even a few pull-ups performed in tempo 3110 might become challenging for an experienced fleet. Rest time. Rest time is also an important factor because it will indicate if you will be able to get enough volume or not. Having the rest time too short between sets will impact your strength performance. You want to have 1.5 up to 3 minutes of rest between each set. In some cases it might be even more. As long as you're not working on muscle endurance, there is not much of benefits in having the rest time short. The importance of negatives. Being a beginner in calisthenics is usually connected to lack of strength in basic moves. Because of that, as I mentioned before, a great way to progress is implementing regressions. Despite that, what we should also learn about are negatives, which simply stand for eccentric part of movement. Extending the time of eccentrics is really beneficial when it comes to muscle growth as well as strength improvement. With that being said, you should consider to include them in your workouts. If you struggle with dips, implement assisted dips, but also work on dips negatives. Make sure to control movement all the way down in constant tempo. The problem with legs. 
One of the weak points when it comes to calisthenics is the leg workout. Calisthenics leg workout is not really beneficial when it comes to muscle hypertrophy. Do not get me wrong. You can build legs with calisthenics exercises but it's not going to be optimal in long term perspective because of lack of possibility to easy increasement of intensity. As a beginner you can start with basic squats and then progress to more demanding exercises such as reverse lunges, Bulgarian split squats and so on. However after just a few months you'll notice that you'll have to work in really high range of repetitions to get enough volume and you'll most commonly overreach your CNS rather than muscles. Because of that I would simply recommend to include weighted exercises over time. Workout routine Ok, but you might get confused after all of this information and still do not know how to train. There are a lot of ways of programming and the most important thing is that the program must be adjusted to your needs. You can start with split or full body workout routine and for a beginner I would recommend the full body workout with one day of rest between each workout. Why? Simply because you will be able to train each muscle part 3 or 3 times a week and because of that you'll reach the optimal muscle hypertrophy. What is more, you'll be also able to execute movements more often and because of that you'll be able to get the right movement pattern in basic exercises and simply learn technique faster. Right now I'm going to show you an example beginner routine to start with but I'm not going to provide you with repetitions. Simply because for each of you it will be different and you're the one who must decide on it. It must be challenging but at the same time you have to be able to execute a good form. You can perform it every second day and in case it's too difficult or too easy make sure to make your first homework. Change it by choosing regressions or progressions. Keep in mind that the best program is the one you can follow in a long period of time. It should be matched to your needs and time. Make sure to also pay huge attention to your nutrition. If you want to build muscle mass or reduce body fat, your caloric intake is a crucial factor here. This was just an example routine. If you need a program with 20 levels of routines, consider Cali Athletics program or my online coaching with more individual approach. Okay guys, thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it useful for you. If you enjoy it, let me know in the comments, smash that like button and make sure to subscribe since I'm planning to release a lot of new videos in the upcoming weeks. That was it for today and see you in the next video. Peace.